हेलो ब्यूटीफुल पीपल टुडे सिक्सटीन ऑफ सेप्टेम्बर माई नेम इज साहिल एंड वेलकम टू द न्यूज पेपर एनालिसिस नो गाइज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स हैव अ लुक ऑन टूडे जी एस फोर्डर सो टूडे विल टेक एन एक्सेलेंट कोट फ्रॉम फोमजिले इम लाम्बो द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ द यू एन वेमेन शी सीज अचीविंग जेंडर इक्वालिटी इज अबाउट डिसरप्टिंग द स्टेटस को एंड नॉट नेगोशिएटिंग इट no guys we see that into the present era the notions of patriarchy gender wage pay gaps glass ceilings pink collar jobs all these things are very rampant into the private as well as public sphere now all such kind of anomalies have to be corrected and it is not about to negotiate those particular things because negotiation will only be leading to a half hearted victory rather these structures have to be uprooted from their core in order to bring the notion of human equality so guys this particular quotation you can utilize it into gs paper number 2 into the topics of gender equality as well as into the topics of sa so guys that's all for today and now let's take the news paper analysis now guys first of all let's take the overview of the entire news paper first guys here we can see that the deployment is there onto the lsc and that thing has been talked by the defense minister however guys nothing important has been given to the article you can skip it now here we can see that a bill with respect to the powers of lg in delhi is being talked here so guys in this respect we'll see certain issues here because earlier also the question on such lines into the upsc mains has been asked then guys moving forward other news are not important for our exam as well as into the city section and regional section important news with respect to the exam has not been given so guys the same kind of uh, uh, regional news has been there now coming to the editorial page now guys this particular editorial talks about the lessons from mahabharat into the present times guys i will refer recommend that you read it yourself because the writing style is good however with respect to the policy suggestions the matter has not been there so guys please do read it by yourself now this particular article talks about the contempt issues which has been uh, which which are being floated against a uh, actor as he had spoken against the judiciary so guys just it has has been said that such kind of tendencies are not good and the episode has been narrated guys not important for our exam because earlier when the prashant bhushan contempt of court issue was going on all such kind of angles we had seen however in this particular article the content has not been provided for the upsc then guys this article talks about the focus on to the venus because our recent break breakthrough so with respect to the science and tech we will receive this entire article then guys this article talks about the personalistic account of the writer as how he had faced the disabilities with respect to accessing the uh, internet website scc online now guys such kind of a personalistic uh, 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 kind of articles are not important he is just narrating his own incident then guys moving forward this particular article talks about the department related standing committees and uh, some new change which has been brought so we'll see this thing now guys this particular article talks about that how government's data is false which has been re released recently with respect to the decline of the economy however guys the data's will be changing a lot till your exam will come so guys the article directly will not be serving the utility now this article talks about that uh, the bihar or maharashtra who should have the proper jurisdiction of the sushant singh rajput case then guys moving forward so uh, here we can see that the mp lads fund has been mentioned so we'll see the issues in this particular respect then the new civil aviation bill has been mentioned so the provisions will be seen here then guys moving forward so here we can see that certain indian antiquities have been handed so with respect to the art and culture we'll see certain issues here then guys just a one liner thing it has been said that kashmir has grassroots democracy since the historical times guys this was a comment which was made when the united nation uh, human right commission accused india of uh, violating the rights of the people in, due to the revocation of article 370 so guys just a kind of a one liner thing however nothing substantial has been there then moving forward the showcase page not important for our exam then guys uh, on to the world's page the uh, ua uh, israel deal which happened ua bahrain israel uh, deal is has been mentioned here however earlier we have seen this particular thing other us elections not important for our exam then guys on to the business page also there is nothing with respect to the paper today and then there is a sports page so that's it and now let's take the newspaper analysis in detail now guys taking up the first news so this particular news pertains to the gs paper number 2 where the issues of federalism has been mentioned now 
this particular news article talks about the union territory of delhi but before going into this particular news let's have some background now india as a republic nation we have a federal system of a polity federal system the word federal comes from the latin word fides which means a kind of an agreement now guys here in india we have two entities we have government at two level one is the center level other is the state level both have their own defined powers which have been written into the seventh schedule of the indian constitution however guys when we talk about indian federalism indian federalism is not equal equal federalism because here the center is having more powers therefore indian federalism has been called by many names such as the quasi federalism by KC Weir, it has been called as cooperative federalism, it has been called as bargaining federalism, etc. Now guys, into the wake of federalism, there is even we added a third tier that is the panchayats and municipalities by the 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment act. So guys, we are federal, but when union territories are uh, concerned, our system turns more of a unitary because over the union territories, the center government has virtual direct control. However, guys, some of the union territories in India, they have been given a kind of a legislative autonomy. How? By giving them a kind of a legislature. And in this particular respect, the union territory of Delhi has also been given a legislature. Now, guys, when we talk about the Union Territory of Delhi, 69th Constitutional Amendment Act inserted Article 239AA in Indian Constitution by which the Delhi was reconverted into the National Capital Territory of Delhi and the Administrator of Delhi was also reconstituted as the Lieutenant Governor of Delhi. Now, guys, by the virtue of the 69th Constitutional Amendment Act, Delhi was given a legislative assembly with the strength of 70 members having six accounts cap council of minister as well as one chief minister now guys into the case of delhi the chief minister is not appointed by the lieutenant governor rather it is appointed by the president you need to keep in your mind this one specific point now guys when we talk about delhi delhi has the power that it, it can make law on all the subjects of the state list as other state governments can do but on three areas the delhi government cannot make law that is the public order police and land now guys moving forward as we had talked about the union territories they are the, uh, the these were the territories on which the federalism did not apply however some of the union territories have been given but guys even then the hangover that union territories are directly controlled by the center that hangover is still remaining and over the period of times because of such kind of notion the disputes on delhi between the delhi and the center have been there and you might have seen that particular thing in news also now guys, the dispute between uh, the center and the union territory of Delhi is because of certain top uh, issues. The number one issue here is that the lieutenant governor has been given a wide discretionary powers and such a discretionary power often comes into the conflict of the perception that the chief minister is having. Moreover guys, there is also a provision that the lieutenant governor can refer any matter to the president on which the lieutenant governor and chief minister are having the differences and then the that thing has to be done which will be said by the president and as we know that the president is a, is working on to the aid and advice of the central government then obviously the central government got a kind of a clear hand into the affairs of the delhi because of this particular thing many a times there have been the problems then guys there is other issue also that is the control over the uh, officers of the all india services so center government says that the delhi government doesn't have any control moreover guys there is even more one more dispute that is in delhi there is the anti corruption branch the delhi government believes that central government officers who are working in delhi they could be charged under the anti corruption branch if the delhi government wants but central government doesn't allow this particular thing so guys because of all these things there are the frequently disputes between the central government and state government 
Now, on to because of this particular matter in 2018, Supreme Court into a NCT of Delhi judgment said that Lieutenant Governor is bound by the advice of the Delhi government, the Council of Minister headed by Chief Minister of Delhi and he should act into their own interest. But guys, since then, that particular thing has not been taken very conveniently by the center and center had again tried to intervene. And now, to give a legal sanctity to this particular thing, what the center government is doing, center government is bringing a new bill in which much substantial power will be given to the LG so that LG has a virtual or virtual say on all the such kind of matters. Now guys, till now, the bill has not been clearly unveiled, therefore their provisions have not been till now very much clearly provided, but it aims to give the discretional discretion as well as more teeth to the LG. Now, actual provisions of the bill are not that much important, but this particular phenomena happens to be a problematic thing. Step by step, it has been seen that into the past few months that the central government is basically uh, going against the spirit of federalism. How it is going against the spirit of federalism? First of all, this could be one example as here we can see. Secondly, into the handling of the pandemic, there have been examples. Number one, the pandemic handling could have been done by the epidemic disease act of 1897 but center government used the ndma national disaster management act of 2005 and even there the section number six was utilized where the clear the clear orders were given and such thing has not been good then the gst is not being given to the uh, to the state governments after that there are other particular matters also for example into the 15th finance commission which is now being coming there the share of money that was to be given to the state government that has been reduced by 1%. So, moreover, so guys, by these particular things, the center government is going for an over centralizing tendency. If a question comes on this particular line, all these points you can provide as an example, it will authenticate your answer. So, guys, that's all about this particular article, and now we'll move to the next article. Now, guys, this particular article pertains to certain developments going on into the wake of the space. Now guys, into this particular article, we can utilize it into our GS paper number 3 where the developments in science and tech has been mentioned. Now, before going on to directly into the article, see, this picture you can see it is of the solar system. In solar system, we have the Mercury, Venus, Earth. Now this Venus, this particular planet is the center of focus into this article. Now Venus is the third planet and the properties of say, this planet is such that it has a very high surface temperature that is nearly 460 degrees Celsius. Then the atmosphere is very heavy with the concentration of the carbon dioxide. Then guys, the, temp uh, the, the because of the uh, terrestrial nature, because of the size and all such kind of thing, the Venus has also been called as the sister of the Earth. Please keep it in your mind. So uh, now guys, the Venus was never such center of uh, uh, scientific inquiry, but what happened in 2011, the European Space Agency launched the Venus Express mission and this Venus Express mission revealed that there is the presence of ozone onto the Venus. Now guys, ozone, guys, ozone has been called as the biomarker. Now, what are these biomarkers? First of all, biomarkers are those evidences. If they are available there, it points that there could be life or the life could be sustained. For example, on Earth, there is oxygen. So, oxygen is a very prominent biomarker. Clear? So, biomarkers are certain traces which indicate the possibility of the life. So, now guys, what has happened? Why again we are discussing? Because now, the phosphine has been confirmed here. First of all, what is this phosphine? Phosphine is an element which is made by one atom of phosphorus and three hydrogen atoms. And this phosphine, it is given, given out by certain microbes who are living. So microbes in a part of their biochemical cycle, they produce this phosphine. So now as phosphine has been confirmed, it means that there or even on Venus, some microbes are living. Therefore, the phosphine has been found. Now guys, this phosphine, the, for the first time, it was confirmed in 2017 by using the Clark Maxwell telescope. It means that directly nobody went there, no probe was sent there, but by telescope, it was identified and now 
it has been confirmed again so guys because of this particular thing because of this existence of phosphine two points are coming number one there is some stubborn life which is existing onto the venus and number two the phosphine gas can survive in even in such harsh climatic quality uh, quality qual climate for example i told you on venus 460 degree celsius temperature is there dense climate is there so there phosphine is also existing so it also points the chemical possibilities of the phosphine as a gas now guys therefore it has been said that now it is required that in situ probe is to be carried in situ means that there we will physically be sending some kind of a probe and it will actually analyze the structure which is existing and guys for this probe in uh, 2021 nasa will be sending will be planning a project as well as ISRO is also planning a project for 2023. Please keep it in your mind. However, guys, there have been certain challenges also in this particular respect. First challenge is that there are very high surface temperature. So the quality of material or the properties of the material of the probe that will be sent, it can pose a challenge. After that, very dense atmosphere is there. And guys, into the atmosphere of the Venus, there is high concentration of sulfuric acid. And because of such high concentration of acid, any matter uh, any particular material it can become very prone to corrosion so anti-corrosive matter or anti uh, basically corrosive kind of arrangements have also been taken care of so guys therefore it has been provided that rather than sending an actually landing mission onto the venus there could be a possibility that the balloons or a drone etc would, would be sent there so guys as as and when uh, the date will come near so this particular matter will be unfolding so in 2021 as the nasa has uh, already decided so this particular thing could be very important for our science and tech so guys that's all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article pertains to our gs paper number two quality section now friends first of all uh, here before going into the article i will give you a background first of all see the parliament you know that the parliament performs various diverse kind of functions and into such kind of functions such kind of brainstorming always a parliament can't I, entire parliament neither it can convene nor all the members have the expertise on certain technical matters so therefore guys into the parliament in 1993 the issue the concept of the departmental related standing committees came as of today there are 24 departmental related standing committees now these departmental related standing committees they do some specific task for example they uh, introspect the budget fine so the grants which have been asked into the budget they introspect them they basically seek the accountability of executive moreover the financial accountability of executive is upheld by these departmental standing committees now with respect to the departmental standing committees there are 24 such committees and they have 31 members these are the joint committees it means the member of both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha are there from Lok Sabha there are 21 members from Rajya Sabha there are 10 members so 31 members are there into one committee now guys ministers cannot be the member of these committees and the members are appointed the Lok Sabha members are appointed by the speaker and the Rajya Sabha members are appointed by the chairperson of the chairman of the Rajya Sabha fine guys now the tenure of such committee is one year it has been provided under the rule 331d of the Lok Sabha and rule 269 of the Rajya Sabha is it clear so guys this is the background now there is a proposal which is going on that these are departmental related standing committees their tenure is one year but it is being said that their tenure will be increased to two years is it clear now as the parliamentary standing committee's tenure will be increased first of all it has been said that there will be a challenge that their term specifically has been mentioned to one year under these rules which i have told you but guys the article says that actually rule doesn't mentions the tenure of the committee rules mentions the term of office of the members so the rule is more concerned towards the 
Another one of the member and not of the committee. So basically, a kind of a technical ground has been found here, and on that basis, it is being said that such a thing could be done. Moreover, guys, it has been said that making a two-year term will actually be be little bit more logical because if we see after every two years, some members of the Rajya Sabha are reconstituted. So with that particular cycle, also it could be aligned. Moreover, guys, it has been said that when there will be the two-year term, the horizon will be more streamlined, little bit bigger horizon will be there, and members who are serving these committees, they will have a kind of a clarity. for a kind of a job work that they have to perform into the coming course of 2 years time now guys if we see there are 224 committees every committee is having 31 members so you can see that the number of members they are huge and guys therefore even there are certain members who are having the double who are the members of the two committees at the same time so guys it has been said that two years a term will actually be helpful for them also because they have a kind of a long horizon or the mid horizon uh, schedule that what in what they are involved so guys those on those basis it has been said that this particular thing is fine and should should be carried however in their art this particular article some deliberate technical points are there which are not relevant for our exam so we do not need to go on to those particular points but for exam the committees happen to be important so just the basic information which i have provided you keep it in your mind so guys that's it now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article provides about uh, the third three indian antiquities or three indian statues which have been handed over by the united kingdom to india now first of all uh, the details as how they were stolen who were holding them how they are there it is not important for our exam but guys there is a some art and culture related information which has been provided so we'll discuss that thing first of all if i give you the background in 1978 these uh, idols were uh, stolen from a temple into the tamil nadu then they from there they were smuggled and they landed into the uk where they were bought by some private collector however the important question is that from which particular temple they were stolen so they were stolen from the raja gopal swami temple now the, the idols have been returned back so this raja gopal swami temple it is in tamil nadu and this temple is having some history originally it was built around 10th century by the kulothunga chola so basically kulothunga chola was a chola ruler guys after that it was further upgraded by the nayak rulers of tanjavur into the 16th century is it clear so this raja gopal swami temple has a quite a history now guys this particular temple is made into the dravidian style of architecture in india we have major three temple styles of architecture one is the nagada that is in north india then the dravidian into the south india and then the vaishar style it is a mixture of both of them particularly prevalent into the deccan region within them also there are sub schools but the major one are the three so this particular temple belongs to the dravidian architecture okay guys so thus only this part is important for us so that's it and now we'll move to the next article now guys this particular article uh, mentions about the mp lads fund which on which the government has not commented anything right now and it has been discontinued now uh, first of all i will give you some background what has happened friends as we know that right now the covid is going on the pandemic is going on and there are large number of financial difficulties also for the center as well as the state government so the center government has done two particular things to bring some kind of a financial prudence fine austerity measures we call it to save money two things have been done number one the mps their 30% salary has been deducted so for cutting their 30% salary the salary allowance and pension of members of parliament amendment bill 2020 was also raised into the parliament and it has just been passed also into the lok sabha for which this particular news came guys the second thing which was done here was the uh, suspension of the mp lads fund till 2020 now what is this mp lads fund mp lads stands for the member of parliament local area development scheme now under this particular scheme 5 crore rupees annually are given to every mp 
and that 5 crore rupees that MP can spend on certain discretionary projects. For example, all the regions might be having their own problems. For uh, at, at some region, there is the problem that there is no uh, kind of uh, functional drain. At some place, there is a no functional school building or such kind of things have to be done. So these 5 crore rupees, every MP can spend into the constituency at their own discretion. Now guys, originally the MP lads came in 1993. Right now, MP lads functions under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. Fine. So this is the M M M MP lad fund which is going on. Now guys, these 5 crore rupees, they can spend on to the developmental work, durable community assets can be built, Swach Bharat Abhiyan can be promoted, Sugamme Bharat. Now guys, Sugamme Bharat also called as accessible india under accessible india we aim to make the build a physical infrastructure as well as digital infrastructure more accessible to the disabled people so for all these kind of things the mp lad money could be spended now guys it has been said uh, on to the lines of the mp lads various state governments has also constituted the mla lads that is the member of legislative assembly local area development scheme they also give the money now even before the COVID-19, MP LAD fund has been criticized many a number of times and the criticism is because of certain reasons. Number one reason is that, guys, in India, we follow the theory of separation of powers where legislature, executive and judiciary, they have their different works. Now, MPs, they are the legislature and the work of the legislature is to legislate onto the law. But as into the MP lads, he is spending the money, he is doing the work of an executive. So basically this particular thing is problematic and executive is working as a, uh, sorry, a legislature is working as an executive. Then guys, it has been said that this particular fund, it is having no statutory backing. By law, this particular fund has not been made and you are spending the money taken by the exchequer without a statutory provision. So there is a problem. And guys, because of this particular thing, the National Commission to review the working of the Constitution as well as Second Administrative Reform Commission recommended that immediately MP lads should be discontinued. So it was said way back. On to this particular thing, many a time petitions have also been made into the Supreme Court. And finally, in 2010, Supreme Court said that actually MP lads doesn't violate the theory of separation of powers because in India we don't follow the strict separation of theory of uh, basically there is a no watertight compartmentalization strictly we don't follow so basically MP lads is good and it can continue now guys though there have been negative but there are certain positive also for the MP lads for example guys there are certain immediate constructive entitlements which are to be provided and now uh, basically clearing money from the that particular process is very complicated and immediately relief could be provided moreover guys it follows or it allows the better decentralization of efforts which has been talked about in many news in order to make federalism more effective so guys it and now into the times of the covid it is being said that now the, every MP is responsible to enhance the health infrastructure and he knows that what type of facilities are to be provided in his own constituency. Therefore, if MP lads fund would have been there, they would have a better flexibility. Moreover, anyhow, the MPs are starved and guys by cutting this particular thing, even further star financial starvation will be caused and it has been said that actually this kind of thing is not being appreciated by the MPs and they had even questioned the government but government had not replied anything. So guys this is all about the MP lads please keep all these nitty gritties into your mind a question into the GS paper number 2 as well as prelims could be asked. So guys that's all about this particular article and now we'll move to the next article. Now guys, this particular news pertains to GS paper number 3 infrastructure. Now in this news, the uh, aircraft amendment bill 2020 has been mentioned which has been passed into the parliament. Now friends, this particular bill, what it does, now before looking into this, let's have some background. Now in India, for the regulation of the aviation sector, we have the Aircraft Act 1934. 
this particular act provides that the use the, the that the entities who are involved into the use sale manufacturing possession of aircrafts they could be regulated by the government and regulatory system has been provided by this particular act but it has been said that such particular legislation has turned very weak and now there is a, a, a need that it should be strengthened further and therefore that particular thing the united nation uh, united nations uh, agency onto the civil aviation has also recommended certain things that india need to do in that particular direction this bill particular aircraft amendment bill 2020 has been brought now this particular bill it has actually done two things number one it has converted three key aviation regulatory bodies which were under the ministry of civil aviation they these three bodies have been given the statutory status what are these three bodies this is these three bodies are the directorate general of the civil aviation dgca then the next is the the next body is the bureau of civil aviation security then the third body is the aircraft accident investigation bureau so guys dgca bcas and aaib these have been given the statutory status and then the penalties have been increased from earlier 10 lakh rupees to 1 crore now what is the statutory status guys the statutory status is that by law you are giving them a kind of a status non statutory status was that earlier they were made by an executive order a kind of an order passed by the ministry of civil aviation or the council of ministers so by giving a statutory status more legitimacy is provided to any organization or to any kind of such setup so by this particular thing they will get more legitimacy and they can take up the issues where the violations for the safety are being taken up however guys little bit of technicalities are there into this particular bill so not that much very important but just keep in mind that such kind of thing has happened so guys that's all about this particular article i hope you have understood it so that's it and now we'll go to the question section friends please pause the video and try to answer the question question number one is with respect to the diksha please read the statement and identify the correct code Question number two is with respect to the article number 256 as well as the seventh schedule. Please guys read the statement and identify the incorrect code. Question number three is with respect to the Competition Commission of India. Please read the statement and identify the correct code. Question number four is with respect to the Sandhi Bird Sanctuary. Please read the statement and identify the correct code. Now the main question for today it is from GS paper number two and it is a 10 marker question. Question says that what do you understand by departmental related standing committees? How do they ensure executive accountability? So guys, please try to write it, quote relevant articles as well as provisions. So that's it. I hope you are liking our discussion. Thank you so much.